Scott Brown here. In today's exciting episode, we are framing the internal area of my house, but it is made complicated by the fact that I've fractured my little toe. But it's not all bad though. I want a foldable e-bike. This episode is also sponsored by Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN that helps you secure your data online. Surfshark offers services that allow you to connect to popular websites. You can still get amazing deals on websites like Amazon or AliExpress, even if they're blocked in your country or if you're traveling. That's right, Surfshark will help you stay safe on public networks, public Wi-Fi. So if you travel a lot or you work in cafes, your online data will be encrypted and protected. Jess and I often take our laptops with us when we go traveling. So it's good to know that with a VPN like Surfshark, all our online data and work will be safe. They also have add-on security combos like alerts to monitor your personal data, check for potential breaches, get real-time breach alerts, and protect your identity. And they allow unlimited devices on one account. Surfshark offer a lot of great features, so go check them out and see what they can do for you. And if you click the link in the description, you will get 83% off and three months for free. Thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this episode. I actually need to cycle home, so I don't know why I just folded that up. Ow! Okay, we have plans. We have consented plans. And this here is our existing layout of our house. I'm standing around about here, so there's the problem room. And there's the problem room on the plan. So behind me and to the left is where we took out that fireplace. This is the area that we have to demolish today. We go from a fireplace and a whole blocked off wall here to a built-in laundry and then this side will be kind of like a shelving area. And then we've opened up this. And the reason we've opened up that is to connect the door here to the living space. So that's what's all behind me there and we'll look into it a bit closer in a sec. I'm just going to get my... Apparently working with a fractured toe, it's actually better to have a solid sole so your toe doesn't move and it gives it more of a chance to heal. And it was the classic thing, I just literally stubbed my toe. That's, that's how I fractured it. Yeah, I can walk normally. I can walk normally. Now luckily, we got Ray on board. <clears throat> you right there, Ray? Good morning. Another giant piece of Rimu. Awesome. Uh, saber saw. Yeah. Is that what I call it? Not a saw saw. What about the power cable? You just cut through it, bro. It's all good. Yeah, it's just spaghetti, right? Yeah. Your tester. I just learned that too. It indicates yellow, so 10 volt, 49 volt. So that's low voltage. You see, that, that's high voltage. I'm not a spark here, I don't know exactly, but I I understand that there's like a, th there's a line going to your uh, cylinders. And just when there's a power outage that you still have, um, that these th things still run. Mm -hmm. Do you, have you heard about that? No. No. Guess I'll turn the... Nothing indicated? Hot water cylinder? I just turned the two switches off. Okay. Yeah. There'll be Sparky's watching this thinking, you idiots, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> There'll be some old water. This reminds me of Austin Powers. There we go. Oh, oh. So we're actually on gas now. That's what that is. We've got the cylinders around the side. So that's where we get our hot water. The cylinder was literally just stuck in there. The plumber who switched it over didn't want to pull all that. Rimu cabinetry out.
Holy moly. With it and Sunny Nelson. Are you a wee coffee monster, Jess? Just a wee monster. <laughs> I pushed myself too far. My foot is very swollen today, that's why I'm in my civilian clothes. I'll spare you the side of my toe, but I didn't think a pinky toe would hold me up so much. It's just too soon, I guess. Too much too soon. We'll give it more of a rest, give it a couple of days, and that might give us some time to organize some different framing than I plan to use. Tell you what, building is hard, but it will be the commute that kills me. We need to patch this hole. You know, it's been a little bit frustrating with this broken toe. It actually reminds me of last year when I was in a moon boot after falling over at a silent disco. Now I've got my toe fractured because I kicked a safety boot. That's how it happened by the way, I was just walking around the house and I walked into a safety boot. The irony, I thought, oh my god, more delays? Just as we're getting started, we've, you know, had no jib, we had no building consent, we had all these issues. And now a lot of those issues are resolved, and then I go and do something like this. Now, because of that delay with the toe, we had to stop everything. I, I wanted to frame up that whole laundry area where the chimney used to be. And in that time, we had a meeting with Nelson Pine. That rhymes. And they said, hey, we could probably get you guys some 100 by 50. And I've never used uh, LVL for wall framing before, and it was at a good price. And that's what we're going to get now. And that wouldn't happen if I didn't fracture my toe. So sometimes, sometimes things work out. So let's use some LVL framing. Not the kind of job he's planned on, but still, he enjoys it. He really looks forward to going to work every morning. He says it's a lot better than school. He's making a lot of money. Like he's doing so well. What do you think? It looks like a particle board. Yeah, it looks like it. This is meant to be a brace wall. So 1.2 wide, regular frame, screw plywood into it. But just cutting this open to make sure we're framing off the same line. And we found MDF, what could possibly be a stud, or at least a thick layer, and then a thick layer of particle board. And then wallpapered on top of that. Not what I expected. So the thing you say often when you renovate. <laughs> Should we have a look and see how deep this is? See if it actually gets to a frame. More than MDF. Oh yeah. Well I can see the hole from here. And yeah, it's like painted boards that form this cupboard. So basically this wall is made up of cupboard, not framing. We need to reframe this wall. So this is our demo plan, and this is the fireplace. The fireplace is gone. Hot water cylinder is gone. We're trying to frame this new wall, and as you can see here, it looks like there's meant to be a wall there. But we now realize that where we want to do this wall, it's actually an MDF cupboard. So the first thing you gotta do is tell the client what's going on. <laughs> not the client. So that is actually a particle board wall there, yeah. and it's got an MDF side with plasterboard attached to it. So what does that mean? Well, it means we have to take out that cupboard that's on the other side, and we have to reframe all the walls. We have to tap in your contingency. There's no budget. The it's just, what can we pay for this month? The unforeseen. <laughs> <laughs> but at this stage, I think we just focus on framing this area, 
so we can support the ceiling and get this hoarding down and then we can move over to the cupboard so sorry okay one second so i understand this properly you thought that this was a supporting wall but it's not a supporting wall yeah so you need to build a supporting wall yes yeah, so the plans have changed that's renovations we've done this a million times this is just the first time i've had to pay for it so we have had to pay for it yeah <laughs> We got a new plan, thanks to Fine Line Architecture, those are our architects, um, Matt and Magda. Talked to both of them and we can make this work and it's actually better. Now I can do what's actually on the plan, which is remove all the walls, put in a lintel that goes all the way across and this maximizes our possibilities. The more of an opening I have there, the more creative I can get with the storage and bench and washing machine. And I wanted to avoid removing that cupboard at first. Yeah, B. Just so it's not as disruptive. But now that I'm forced to do it, I'm kind of forced to do the right thing, I think. <laughs> so it was really helpful talking to Matt and Magda. They just like, they know all the calculations off the top of their head. So, so we worked out the lintel size, the joists, everything. And now we can just go ahead and frame the wall. We've got a resolution. This is great. And the 6x2 LVL I picked up will be will be perfect for this. So all is well that ends well. If you're in the local area and you want to architect, fine line architecture, highly recommend. Ray and I are gonna continue. Laminated veneer lumber. Basically plywood framing. Probably not how they'll put it, but it makes it a lot stronger than just regular timber. Do we need to uh, increase pressure? Because it's. Uh... It seems like it's struggling out. What? There's a pressure gauge on it. Yeah. No, it's almost in red, but that means it's full. Okay. <laughs> you think it's the LVO and the remo? I got my uh, Milwaukee here, so we can. Uh... Oh yeah, and I got the Koki. LVL plus remo is about as difficult a challenge as you can imagine for a nail gun, especially a purely air nail gun without the hose. Let's go to the battery ones. So we've got two guns. Milwaukee. Hikoki. See what we can do. Nice. Awesome. But it might have been a lucky shot here. Oh, stuck out a little bit there. Looks like we got a knot, that might be a factor. We'll go over here. Much better. Pretty decent? Yeah. Certainly more powerful than the airbow. 